desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the, fruit, the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live, and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Imagine, if you will, that you, that we, are on a house tour. Perhaps you have been on one before, maybe even here in Shadyside. But this neighborhood, I assure you, is a bit different, perhaps rarefied, but appropriate for all. And this house, it is said of the house we shall visit that it is more than a dwelling, that it seems as old as time itself, 
having been built over generations, this is no ordinary home. Every stone, every piece of wood, the very floorboards on which we walk and the ceiling beams above, the wiring and the pipes, none of it is new. And yet, everything about this place is up to the moment. As we approach this home, its grand and formidable, yet not imposing facade is framed by seven pillars, solid and sure. This proud but modest home is actually quite approachable, reassuring us with the thought and effort and learning that went into its construction. This is no ordinary house. This is no ordinary house tour. After all, this is the house that wisdom built. We spoke of wisdom just a few moments ago in our reading from Proverbs and Psalms. Indeed, we read this morning, wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. And it is those pillars that we saw as we approached. These seven pillars represent the seven foundational, foundational principles upon which wisdom stands. As we approach the entryway, a warm glow spills out through the windows, casting a welcoming aura that beckons us to come closer. The door swings open, and the rich aroma of homemade foods, perhaps freshly baked bread or a simmering stew, greets us as we read, Come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. The woman of the house invites us in. All this she has prepared for us, food and drink, wisdom that is ours for the sharing, as inexhaustible as it is timeless. Come eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Our hostess generally, generously offers us to continue. Let all those who, who are hungry come and eat. Let all those who thirst for justice and righteousness and truth drink their fill, so that all who share sustenance from this place shall be known as the wise. As these rich sights and aromas envelop us, they draw us in, not just with well-intended words, but with a warm embrace, a sense of acceptance, of being seen, of belonging, of returning home. It is somehow as if the house itself is welcoming us in. This is no ordinary house tour, and this is no ordinary home. This is none other than the house of wisdom. Jewish tradition has long taught that wisdom is far more than intellectual achievement or human cleverness, or even the better of two options. Wisdom, rather, is a divine gift, a reflection of God's will and insight revealed for all humanity. According to Jewish tradition, wisdom serves as the foundation for all moral and ethical decision-making, guiding our paths, shaping our communities, and leading us toward righteous living and a greater, more proximate connection relationship with the divine. In ancient times, wisdom was respected as a divinely provided force, deeply intertwined with the very fabric of creation. It was believed that wisdom emanated directly from God, embodying the principles that sustain the universe. As such, wisdom held a unique authority, not only for individual and ordinary people, but guided kings and prophets in their decisions and actions. In this, wisdom was understood as a perfect and complete gift from God, and according to Jewish tradition, in fact, wisdom was present even before the creation of the world and may indeed have served as the divine blueprint for the universe. Over time, this abstract concept of wisdom began to take on a more tangible form in Jewish tradition. Wisdom came to be personified as a woman, and this personification allowed the faithful to engage with wisdom in a more relatable and accessible way. Wisdom, so it is, beckons us to come into her home, to eat from her table, and to drink her best spirits. As a nurturer, wisdom became not only a source of knowledge, but also a reassuring, sustaining, and stabilizing force in our lives. This idea is echoed in still another verse we shared this morning. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. For elsewhere in Proverbs we learn that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Where do you and I find wisdom today? And what do we consider its source? 
Is wisdom, in fact, a divine gift revealed to us in full form from above, captured perfectly in the pages of our sacred scriptures? Or is wisdom molded and shaped by the hands and experiences of countless individuals over generations and centuries, if not millennia? And how does such wisdom, once honed and polished by time, become so deeply ingrained in our tradition and cultural fabric that we come to ascribe it to God, personify it as essentially Mother Earth, and trust in it above all else as a guide for living with morals and purpose. Evolutionary anthropology suggests that human intelligence has evolved and developed as sophisticatedly as it has through social learning and mutual cooperation. Our ability to share knowledge and learn from one another's experiences has been one of the most decisive factors in human beings' success in building communities, in improving human existence, and indeed has been key to our very survival. And the insights and practices that have served us best have been distilled over generations into what we now call wisdom. Indeed, this is where the contemporary concept of the wisdom of crowds becomes so powerful. After all, wisdom as we know it is not only found perfectly distilled in sacred texts purportedly handed down from above, but we understand wisdom to be forged in the crucible of human experience, our interactions with one another in the world, shaped by the diverse voices and experiences of the entire human family over time. As these collective insights have been refined, they became part of the broader tapestry, the stories and traditions we inherit and pass on. Over ages, as wisdom became time-worn and familiar, its origins became obscured, allowing us to see it as if these wise teachings have always been with us, as if they were gifted to us before even the beginning of time, and are themselves, therefore, timeless. But let us move out of our heads and move back into our hearts, returning to the hearth and to our house tour. As we return to the home in which we now find ourselves, our hostess calls out, Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many days, keep your tongue from evil speech and your lips from deceit. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue peace. Who among us can hear such polished prose and not marvel at its essential truth? Who can listen to our hostess and fail to embrace her warm words and wise counsel? Wisdom certainly is God's gift to us, revealed through the actions and decisions and collective experiences of countless individuals. With this partnered understanding, wisdom takes on an ever more timeless quality and its luscious patina grows such that we may see within wisdom and within ourselves a reflection of the divine made real in our lives. As we linger, staying a bit longer in this house of wisdom, breathing in its savory scents, drinking in its lustrous sights, eating at her table and drinking in her words like wine, we think of the knowledge and understanding that are available to all to be shared with those who hunger for truth and thirst for righteousness and justice. Wisdom herself invites us to stay as long as we wish in her house, to sit and to study and to savor, to eat and to enjoy, to let the food and drink fill not just our bodies, but allowing them to nourish our spirits and souls. As we prepare to bring our house tour to an end, we recall another verse we shared. Leave your simple ways and you will live. You will come to walk in the light of insight. Even as our day's house tour has come now to its conclusion, so in another way has our tour of wisdom only just begun. For we, as we find ourselves back at the entrance of this home, we approach it now with a new and wider perspective, a deeper understanding that this place is not just a place to visit. Rather, is wisdom a house wherein we are invited to dwell, to stay and grow in wisdom? Its doors are ever open, welcoming all who seek to learn, to understand, and to improve themselves in the world entire. 
Wisdom home is a communal space where knowledge is nurtured generously, learning is shared liberally, and for our collective efforts, our depth of understanding is conservatively multiplied many times over. And so as we conclude our tour of Wisdom's house this morning, may we go forth with a sense of purpose and clarity. Wisdom's house, after all, is not just a place to behold. Rather, it is a place to behave and believe and belong, a sacred space where our paths are illuminated and our actions are molded by the divine made manifest in our lives and that of all of humanity. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to the living God, saying, Hear our prayer. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We give thanks for Michael, our presiding bishop, and we pray for Sean, our presiding bishop-elect, during this transition in leadership. Living God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Living God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Living God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for the members of the Calvary Choir on pilgrimage in England Bless their travels and their singing. Living God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially for Judy, Stuart, Erica, Carolyn, Kate, Chuck, Bonnie, Walt, Ned, Elizabeth, Betsy, Julia, Lori, Selena, Megan, Edward, Jean, Joan, Hattie, Dawn, Lori, Charles, Roy, Cam, Jean, Peggy, Elise, Matthew, Doreen, Charlie, John, Mimi, and all those commended to our prayers. We pray also for people throughout the world living with HIV and AIDS, for those struggling with addiction and those in recovery, for strength for caregivers and healthcare workers, 
for those whom we now name. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Living God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. We pray especially for Phyllis Hickok, Nancy Nealon Ellis, and P.J. Maloney, for those in whom memory altar flowers are given today, Mary DeForest, Linda DeForest Clark, Muriel Worrell Lewis, Joan Marsh McLeod, Donald Terry McLeod, Charles Adebayo Oki. For victims of gun violence, for those who mourn, for those whom we now remember. May we share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Living God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Episcopal Church. It's good to see you all today. Um, if you are a guest today, we hope you will fill out one of the cards with information and drop that in the offertory plate, and one of the clergy will be in contact with you this week. Uh, you'll see if you came through the parish hall that our annual Calvary book sale is there. It is the last day today until 2 p.m., and all the money that is raised for that, it's two to $5,000 goes to literacy programs in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, today, you can fill an entire bag for $5, $15. You probably could fill two bags for $15 if you wanted to, but please do uh, patronize that. You'll see a note, too, in the bulletin for Calvary Day at PNC Park to watch the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates. About 25 people so far have signed up for that. If you'd like to join us, we'll be leaving right after church. It's a Sunday. Uh, the game is at 135 against the Royals. Hope you can make it if you're a baseball fan. You'll see, too, a note in the bulletin about Pack to School program with Lincoln Larimer Elementary School, uh, Edge of Homewood. If you're able to help with that, to help the children get a good head start for the school year, please do so. And you'll see a note in the bulletin about foyer groups. Foyer groups are an opportunity for people at Calvary because this is a big place with three services that are effectively distinct congregations to get to know one another. It is two or three to four times a year dinner in somebody's home with about eight people gathered. Usually they don't mostly know each other, so it's a great social time to be together. And thank you to Rabbi Aaron Bisno, our rabbi in residence, for preaching today. Walk in love as Christ loved, him, loved us and gave himself for us and offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks, praise, and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory and all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to, sh <clears throat> to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Oh. 
With the prayers of this congregation, we send you forth bearing the sacrament of Christ's presence, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.